three. Three. The negative 15 wind chill. You know, there's one thing I know for sure. I am not in South Carolina anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm really impressed that so many people came out, given the weather. Uh, most Floridians don't come north in January. The only thing is, I just landed in an airplane, and it's nasty out there. From the moment Des Moines woke up last Friday morning, it was clear that the final weekend before this year's Iowa caucuses might look a little different than usual. John, what's going on on the ground three days out? As soon as I landed, they said there was a blizzard coming, a foot of snow in the next 24 hours, and the National Weather Service said life-threatening winter weather conditions yeah. in Des Moines. Life-threatening or not, as the Arctic blast slammed into Iowa full force, the campaign trail, like most of Iowa's roads, quickly became impassable. So instead of frantically crisscrossing the state, Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, and Donald Trump shut down their schedules on Friday, with Trump bailing on all but one of his events on Saturday and Sunday, too. Via social media, he assured his Iowa fans that he'd be back, though his grasp of his own itinerary seemed a tad tenuous. Hello, Iowa. This is your favorite president. I'm leaving. Uh, very shortly for your beautiful state. Uh, I'll get there sometime around Saturday night or something. The sight of the Republican field literally frozen in place was strange for sure, but also a strangely apt end for a race that's been politically frozen for months. Especially on the GOP side, Iowa has a reputation long and hard earned for volatility and caucus night surprises, the kind of dark horse victories that, when the smoke cleared in 2008, 2012, and 2016, had these guys celebrating. Tonight, I love Iowa a whole lot. Game on. God bless the great state of Iowa. But this year, Iowa hasn't felt much like Iowa at all. There's been no volatility whatsoever. Trump's been up by roughly 30 points since last summer. And among those who know Iowa Republican politics best, the possibility of a shock the world upset is vanishingly close to zero. You don't think there's any way Trump doesn't win here on Monday night? Uh, yeah, it, it looks almost impossible. And Iowa is surprises people a lot. Yeah. I don't think we have that kind of surprise in us right now. That was Kochel's view even before the release on Saturday of the final NBC News Des Moines Register Mediacom Iowa poll conducted by the revered Iowa pollster Ann Selzer showing Trump at 48 with a 28 point lead and only deepening the pervasive sense that Trump has Iowa in the bag. But the Iowa poll also showed Haley for the first time overtaking DeSantis, arguably turning their fight for second place into caucus night's main event. In this race, there's been no punches thrown from the contenders after the guy at the top. Right. So here we are, yeah. and we know it's going to happen. And the question, the really only question, is who's two and three, and who then who stays in the race marching forward to New Hampshire. It's crazy. You've seen Selzer's poll. Yeah. Trump's 48, Haley's at 20. If those numbers were the real numbers, what's the story? She's, she's the story. If she comes in second, pretty clear that that she's the one who's going to earn the right to take on Trump one on one. There's no way you you win when it's Trump versus the field. Trump one on one will be a different dynamic. Ann Selzer tells me that Haley's leap into second place struck her as a big deal, too, at first. But Selzer wondered about the strength of Haley's support. So she looked more deeply at her numbers. We have a four point scale, like extremely enthusiastic, very enthusiastic, mildly enthusiastic or not that enthusiastic. The majority of her supporters are on the bottom half of that scale. Right. They, they choose her yeah. as their first choice. They're only mildly or not that enthusiastic. I've never seen that. We'll know soon enough, of course, if Haley has the big mo or not, but one person who appears to believe that she does is Trump. In recent days, he's amped up his attacks on Haley as her poll numbers have risen. Yet for her part, Haley continues to couch her critiques of Trump in the vaguest of generalities. I think President Trump was the right president at the right time. I agree with a lot of his policies. But rightly or wrongly, chaos follows him. And we can't be a country in disarray and have a world on fire and go through four more years of chaos. Haley knows that many who see Trump as a menace desperately want her to put caution aside and go after him, guns blazing. The other day in Indianola, she addressed those calls head on. For those that want me to hit Trump more, 
I just am not going to do it. I just think politics is personal enough. But Haley may need to change her tune and fast if she wakes up on Tuesday morning in a one-on-one -on -one battle with Trump, an opponent whose definition of personal enough is unlikely to be in the same galaxy as hers. So guys, I, I think, you know, the, the to me, a Sorry. couple of the takeaways here, and I'll toss back to you guys to talk about. One of them is, uh, th is this interesting question. If, 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 if it, we end up in a situation where Nikki Haley has a big night tonight, Iowa will, and, and she ends up in a one-on-one -on -one essentially with Trump. That is what people who wanted to stop Trump have said we've needed all along. We said it in 2016. They said it in 2020. All right, now they're saying now in 20, 2024. You can't beat Trump in a spread out field. You could end up after tonight uh, with really the one-on-one -on -one dynamic that people have said is the only way for Trump to ever be taken down. So in that case, Iowa w will have winnowed the field if it does that and will have really done its job. The other thing I'll say is that, uh, that Ann Selzer's point about the lack of enthusiasm, of, of real enthusiasm for Haley, she continues to hold out the possibility, as a lot of people do here, that it's in a low turnout scenario with the bad weather and everything else, that Ron DeSantis may end up surprising everybody and actually finishing second in the end. Boy, that really is uh, troubling. Uh, for if, if you're Nikki Haley and you look at this poll and you're right, the, the least, in, least inspired people, the least motivated people are your supporters. Maybe at the end of the day, they all come out. Maybe it's because they're more anti-Trump than pro Nikki Haley. But uh, yeah, a, a remarkable uh, report. Thank you so much. And stay with us, John.